Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode of InRange TV. This is another episode in the What Would Stoner Do 2017 project, and in this video we're going to deep dive into the fire control group, otherwise known for most people as the trigger system. So, we have been traditionally using KE Arms match grade triggers in all of our AR-15s previously. They provide a nice 4.5 pound, 5 pound match grade trigger pull, single stage, adjustable, aluminum housing, some benefits over the standard traditional AR-15 fire control group. Russell Fagan from KE Arms at one of the matches came to me and said, you need to look at our new KE Arms trigger for your What Would Stoner Do project because he thought it would align with what we're trying to do. One of the things he mentioned is that in a standard AR-15 fire control group, or even more traditional match grade ones, there's a disconnector right here, and in high velocity bolt carrier group cycling guns, such as a blowback 9mm, a lot of energy is deployed into the fire control group based on the hammer and the disconnector, which then puts energy into the fire control group retention pins, as well as fire control group parts. And in some guns, like 9mm blowback guns, some 308s and some suppressed applications, they've actually seen parts breakage in KE arms triggers as well as fire standard AR-15 fire control groups as a result of that. He said this, this new trigger mitigates that entirely. It's not a problem I've ever had, never seen that happen in any of my guns. I don't shoot a 9mm blowback, even though I do shoot suppressed, I've never seen that happen. So I was like, eh, that's not enough of a concern for me to really worry about for the What Would Stunner Do project. But then he started mentioning some of the other stuff going on. Apparently this trigger system from KE Arms is inspired by the HK416. And so one of the things they've been able to do is, okay, we've cycled the gun here, it is empty of course, on safe. Once you fired it, now the hammer has been decocked, the gun has been fired. In a traditional AR-15 fire control group, or even in standard match grade ones, you could now not put the safety back on. However, on the new K arms trigger, you can. You can put the safety on, on a down hammer. So when the hammer has been deployed and the safety is now on, you no longer have to worry about the condition of your gun to be able to employ the safety. Now, this doesn't sound like a big deal, but it actually is a big deal. Obviously, it's beneficial for you to always know the condition of your gun, and if you can, you want to know the condition of your gun. But you can't always know the condition of your gun. Sometimes things go awry, sometimes you need to mortar the gun to clear something. That's an example of where this is relevant. So, in that regard, you can now put the safety on, which gives you a little extra margin of error, which you always want when dealing with the gun in strange situations. And being able to do that anytime, anytime you need it, is a big benefit. And immediately I perked up and I said, wow, this does sound relevant to the What Would Stoner Do project. Another thing that's a significant difference is there is not a traditional disconnector. The lack of a traditional disconnector means that this system is more sealed. It's got an aluminum housing and there's very little exposed in terms of parts or sear surfaces. And as a result, in theory, it should be far more resilient to dirt, debris, primers, etc., getting into the fire control group. Uh, as resilient as the AR-15 is, the fire control group is probably the most susceptible part of the gun in terms of something going awry that you can't immediately remediate in the field. Primer spits, uh, let's say you're shooting reloaded ammunition and for some reason a hot round and a, pi a primer pops out, gets into the system, it almost magically gets under your trigger group. It's weird, it happens, I've seen it happen a number of times, it's happened to me at a high power match, I've seen it happen at matches, I've seen rocks get in here, dirt and debris get in here. Dirt and debris up here doesn't happen so much and it doesn't really cause a problem. Dirt and debris in the fire control group of an AR-15 is a big problem. And so by being contained in an aluminum housing, as well as having less surface area of contact for things to get in the way of, in theory, this should be a more resilient system than the standard traditional fire control group. We're going to talk more about that in CGI coming up in the video. So. The ability to be able to turn on the safety or engage the safety whenever you want to, regardless of the condition of the hammer, and the idea that it should be more resilient with a less traditional system that's more based on a more modern concept of how the trigger system could work, really lent itself towards what we would want to do with the What Would Stoner Do 2017 project. I want to let you guys know this is not sponsored content. They are not paying us to do this. They gave us, in full disclosure, two of the triggers for us to play with and see what we thought of it. We both used them and thought they were excellent, really liked them. We gave up nothing in terms of the quality of the trigger pull, being a four and a half pound match grade trigger, but we gained the benefit of being able to engage the safety whenever we wanted to or needed to, especially in a clearance drill, and the theoretical ability or possibility of it being more resilient against dirt and debris. So those things lined up, make sense for the What Would Stoner Do 2017 project. And so let's deep dive into some CGI explaining how this new system works. Okay, what we're looking at here is a traditional AR-15 fire control group. This one is semi-automatic, however the military version is virtually identical. Um, there are not too many components here, there's some springs that apply pressure to the hammer, and of course trigger reset. There's a spring impinging upon the disconnector retained within the trigger assembly itself, and a couple pins that slide through the low receiver to retain all these parts within the gun. This provides usually an 8 to 9 pound trigger pull, which for a military design is considered totally acceptable. However, by modern standards, isn't necessarily considered optimal. Um, the problem with the fire control group in the AR-15 is that it is susceptible to dirt and debris, or more often than not, 
believe it or not, a popped primer out of a fired round. Not always with reloaded ammunition, sometimes with even standard manufactured ammunition, primers can pop out of them. Uh, this is why the military tends to crimp primers to help prevent or remediate that problem. However, whether it's a primer, a rock, or dirt, once it gets into the system, it can get under the fire control group and cause a malfunction in the AR-15 that is very hard to clear. This is not something you can tap rack or clear in the field very clearly, easily. Sometimes you can shake the gun, get it out, kind of wiggle the trigger, play with it. Sometimes you can get stuff out of the way to get it firing again. But generally speaking, once a rock, dirt, or debris, or a primer, more often than not, gets under that trigger bar, you're kind of out of commission, and that's a significant failure point within the AR-15. We've seen the AR-15 is very resilient to mud tests and very resilient in very fouled conditions. However, the fire control group, in my opinion, is one of the most susceptible parts of the AR-15 design. So one of the solutions to this problem is to install an aftermarket drop-in trigger assembly. This one happens to be from KE Arms, however there are a lot of them like this on the market. The entire fire control group is contained within an aluminum housing, and that mitigates a lot of the potential problems of dirt and debris getting underneath some of these mechanisms if it were to get near the fire control group. And so while this greatly mitigates the problem, it's still susceptible. There's still a disconnector, there's still portions of areas here that are exposed underneath the hammer, the disconnector itself, in which dirt and debris could get in there and still present a problem. So K Arms has redesigned a new trigger, which really fundamentally changes how the fire control group works in the AR-15, very similar to the HK416, however available to us on the civilian market. So this is the new KE Arms trigger. One of the things you should immediately notice is the hammer looks very different. And most importantly, there's no disconnector. Not whatsoever. Well, at least not visibly so. This has been kind of changed dramatically in which there's a sear-based mechanism with contained within the housing, and as a result, there's very little area for any sort of dirt or debris or anything to get into the fire control group system housed within the aluminum housing itself. So this is an above view of the new trigger system, and you can see that while there's some holes there and area for things to get into, they're unimportant to the function of the trigger, and we're going to get into that in a moment. However, the disconnector not being exposed, and this entire system being contained within an aluminum housing, means the ability for things to get in there and cause a problem is pretty unlikely. So here we have a CGI fly-in view of the new KE Arms Fire Control Group. Like I said, it's similar to the HK416 design, but we're going to walk through step-by-step step what's going on with this trigger system. But most importantly, let me show you right off the bat, the aluminum housing is flush with the lower part of the receiver wall, and that the internals of the fire control group are contained within the aluminum housing, as I mentioned earlier, meaning that it'd be very difficult for anything to get within there. Okay, so here we have a comparison of a traditional AR-15 fire control group with the new KE Arms trigger system. As you can see, they are quite different. And so we have to discuss these in terms that make sense, even if they aren't necessarily the proper definition. So in the picture below, the yellow part is the hammer, the red part is the trigger, the blue is the primary sear, and the green is a secondary sear, although I'm going to refer to that as the disconnector, and we're going to get into that in just a moment with the CGI. So there's more parts here and more complexity, but ironically this actually is counterintuitive in that it tends to provide something that's more reliable and provides us functionality we didn't have with the traditional fire control group. Okay, so in this diagram, the main sear, blue, is in contact with the hammer notch, yellow. The gun is cocked and ready to fire. Pulling the trigger presses the main sear downward, thus releasing the hammer, allowing it to strike the firing pin and fire the rifle. The bolt carrier group cycles and pushes the hammer back down. The green secondary sear, or disconnector, catches the main sear, blue, and then that then again catches the hammer in its notch, recocking the rifle. Releasing the trigger releases the secondary sear, or disconnector, and then pressing the trigger again will again release the main sear blue, thus firing the gun again. One other benefit here is the lack of a traditional disconnector. Normally the disconnector in the standard AR-15 fire control group is struck by the hammer when it is cycled by the bolt carrier group. This striking, especially in a high velocity bolt carrier group system, like a blowback 9mm AR-15 variant, impinges a lot of pressure and energy into the fire control group pins and parts, and does actually cause breakage in some variants. Now this is not a problem in most traditional 5.56 guns, although it can be in suppressed applications. What it boils down to is if the bolt carrier group is moving at higher velocity than average, this does put more pressure and wear and tear on the fire control group with the traditional system, and it can cause breakage. Since this trigger control group no longer has a traditional disconnector, and therefore the way the hammer is cocked, it impinges no energy into the fire control group during the cycling process, thus mitigating any risk of parts breakage as a result of a high velocity bolt carrier group. One more thing we do need to mention is we are using an Ambi Safety. This is provided by KE Arms, however there are other manufacturers like this on the market. 
We have found that having an ambidextrous safety is one of the most important elements of having the rifle be completely ambidextrous. Whether for support side transitions or if you're left-handed, an ambi safety is a huge benefit and really has no detriment. We also can have a 45 or 90 degree safety throw, and we think this has relevancy not only for the civilian application, 45 degree may be more comfortable to you, especially with an ambi safety. However, if this were to be applied in a military application, it could theoretically have a 45 degree throw for semi-automatic and a 90 degree throw for fully automatic or something like that that would allow you to have full tactile feedback in the field. So two more things to mention. We have mounted ours with a cross bolt and screw system with a little bit of blue Loctite. I believe this to be a really resilient way to keep your fire control group in your system. However, the production K arms trigger does not need to do this. You could do this if you'd like. You can use just fire control group pins and there will be little spring clips actually in the housing that will hold those pins in place for you. So you can do that either way. We just prefer this system. Either way works. Hopefully this provides an interesting perspective on the AR-15. We're trying to modernize the AR-15 and approach our builds from the perspective of what would Stoner have done in 2017, and this trigger system definitely aligns with that endeavor. If nothing else, the ability to engage the safety in any condition of the rifle is a huge benefit and boon, along with not losing a quality 4.5 pound or so match grade trigger, so that's a no-brainer. The potentiality of being able to resist more dirt and debris and primers is a great thing, but we won't be able to really determine that until we fired this over time. That kind of stuff is when lightning strikes and trying to recreate it on the clock or just trying to recreate it off the clock even is a very difficult endeavor. So we'll see. Uh, I don't believe that we'll see any issues with this and we have used it quite extensively so far and had no problems. However, we also hadn't had any spent primers pop out either. So we'll find out. That's one of those things that you just got to find out over time. But again, the good trigger pull, the fact that it doesn't deploy energy into the fire control group pins and parts, and that you can engage the safety in any rifle condition are all reasons that we wanted to go with this trigger system. Trigger system's on the market now. If you want to look at it, try it out for yourself. You can look at the link below. That goes to KE Arms. Um, however, you're going to be want to watch more of these uh, videos about what would Stoner do. We're going to deep dive in every subcomponent of the rifle and describe and explain why we chose that part. And hopefully this first iteration of that is an indication of things to come and keep you guys interested because we believe it to be a very unique and interesting project. We want to remind you that we are entirely a viewer supported endeavor at this point. We demonetize ourselves on YouTube. We're not accepting any ad revenue. So it's up to Patreon and viewers like you to keep in range TV alive. If you can do that financially, please consider going to our Patreon page and supporting us. If you can't, we understand that's totally reasonable. The best thing you can do after that is subscribe to our channels on YouTube, Full30, VidMe, and Facebook, and share our content with your friends. Since we can't rely on YouTube's algorithms anymore to promote our content, we need to rely on people like you to promote our content for us. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.